Okay, so how to stand up for yourself. Let's get straight into this. So first things first, this video is for people who have a problem with speaking up. You get all routed up and you kind of internalize your anger and then you never express to a person how they're making you feel. This video is for people who shut down during difficult conversations. So oftentimes when you have to express yourself, you can't do it. You can't explain it. You can't get it out or you just feel like it's unnecessary. Maybe you weren't hurt growing up. This video is for also people who want to just strengthen their communication skills and want to feel more confident and their abilities and this will also help you strengthen your relationships because when we learn how to stand up for ourselves and speak up for ourselves we're operating in truth which then will allow truth to come back to us one thing i learned as a former people pleaser is that when you're holding things in you are also holding yourself in <laughs> so you're going to attract people that aren't really connected to your true self and when you learn how to express yourself you're going to notice that your relationships get better so let's get straight into this first things first so now i'm gonna walk y'all through my difficult conversation like little tool guide so i remember for years it was really hard for me to speak up i, I would say like around my high school middle school years i used to just keep everything inside and i would like journal or diary entry everything's out um diary entry everything out and then i got to a place where i was like okay no more i can't do this so let's say number one what is it that you want to talk about so when you have in this difficult conversation or when someone does something i'm going to talk about let's say for example when um someone made a, a comment about my natural hair at work right so i had my natural hair out and then i switched i had my hair braided and then i switched it to regular style so i had my hair braided and then i switched it to wearing it out so I had just got a trim at the time. And then the lady was like, um, a coworker came into the bathroom and she was like, oh, why don't you wear your hair the other way? I love it when you have it the other way. Oh yeah, it looks so much better the other way. Do they have like extensions or something you can wear? She was the white lady. And I said, um, excuse, you know, I'm gonna wear my hair how I choose to wear my hair. This is how my hair grows out my scalp. And she was like, oh oh you know her head back like oh you got the audacity to defend yourself against me yeah you coming for me worried about my hair we need to be worried about yours but i didn't yell i didn't scream i didn't curse at the the woman i just put her in her place and you know used education so let me tell you when i don't speak up for myself it feels terrible <laughs> so i'll be like silently seething aggravated annoyed but that's a perfect example of standing up for yourself now, let's say, for example, at a, I had a job situation. I was at work and um, the coworker, uh, I told him, can he, you know, better his handwriting because I couldn't understand. He had me wanting to type, he wanted me to type something up for him, but I could never really understand his handwriting. And I said, I said, oh, you know, can you write a little neater? Cause I can't really understand it. But I did make a mistake. And sometimes I do this when I get nervous is I laughed at the handwriting and then asked them when I should have just, you know, asked them. And so I said, you know, can you write better? Because I can't understand your writing. So he was like, what do you mean? My writing's perfectly fine. Are you kidding me? You know, so I emailed him. Now we talk about professional standing up for yourself. I emailed him. I sent him an email. I didn't say anything right then and there. But I sent him an email the following morning. And I told him I wanted to talk to him. So when we got into the office, we went into a conference room. And, um, you know, he, re he responded, he said, of course. So we went into the conference room and, um, you know, we sat down, everything was cool. And I told him, I was like, you know, I started off with what I liked about him. This would kind of help you calm your nerves. So I said, you know, I'm very, you know, grateful to be working at this, you know, at this company. And uh, well, no, I did not say that. I said, you know, I love how you are the type of person to speak up and allow me and um, show me how to be a better uh, worker at your firm, employee at your firm, because he always spoke up. He always showed me how to improve things. He noticed mistakes in my work and he would let me know. And I said, I love that because that helps me become better. However, I didn't appreciate how you spoke to me the other day when I told you that, you know, I couldn't understand your writing. I said, you know, we all deserve, we all work here, we're all a team, and we all deserve to be treated fairly um, and treated with respect. So what I did was I started off with what I did like, and then I told him the problem. And then I said, 
a, something I want to see and a solution. So basically saying, need her handwriting and speak to me with more respect. Any Anytime you need something from me, I'll get it done. But as long as you say it in a respectful way. And he didn't. And one thing I want you guys to understand, a person may deny what you say. But you have to have confidence. You know what happened. Whatever it was, whatever bothered you, if it bothered you, something's off. So it could be something off in you or something off in the person. But when someone is speaking to you in a disrespectful tone or making you do something funny, because you, you feel funny because your personal values are messed with. And for me, my personal value, something I really take serious is respect, courage, and, um, and uh, assertion. So when he did that, and when he spoke to me in that way, I didn't feel respected. And it would have bothered my courage and my assertion values if I didn't speak up. So that's what I mean. So, um, yes. So I basically just, I want you not to worry so much if about a person's reaction right then and there. So don't conjure up scenarios about, what you think a person is going to say, how you think they're going to respond. You need to just get out what you feel and just get it out respectfully. And then another thing, as Tony Gaskin said, seek to understand, then be understood. So don't worry so much about, oh, well, they said they didn't do it. Or, oh, what if they go off? Or, oh, what if they this? Oh, what if they that? That man know he came at me disrespectful. That person knows what was done. And sometimes we can misinterpret things. But I do know based off the way what I heard, you know, I just felt like it was disrespectful. So now the coworker is aware of how to speak to me and how to move forward. And from that point forward, he didn't disrespect me again. So that's what I mean. I want you guys to understand um, that. <laughs> like, don't be so focused on... Um, what the person will say, what the person will do, what the person will think. Just come in there graceful. Make sure the conversation is personal. It's between you and that person. Make sure you're not yelling, screaming, wilding. Try not to be too assumptuous too. Just speak on what you saw. So let's go back to a recap. Number one, what you do is you talk, you, you know, you organize the conversation. So y'all could choose to talk at whatever time to what time. Y'all could talk in a certain space at your house, over the phone. I prefer like face to face or over the phone. But sometimes since I write better than I talk, it was better for me to, you know, also have conversations via text. You just want to make sure because I've made this mistake of <laughs> getting a little beside myself during text. So I had to work on that, too. So um, and then you want to start off with what you like about the person. Get into detail. What happened? How it made you feel? What do you want to see more of? Okay, we're all we're, we're all a team in this firm. I would like to like for you to talk more respectfully and please, you know, better your handwriting or you know, help me out a little bit, make it a little easier, maybe type it up and then give it to me to fix it, you know? So just come in with solution. Now I'm gonna give y'all another scenario, something more personal. So let's talk about maybe if you have to leave somebody, you have to let somebody go, um, which is very hard, especially with friendships or relationships the same principle applies. One thing that is hard is holding stuff in. I'm going to say it again. So let's say you have to talk to a friend and you're ready to let them go. Ghosting or, um, you know, acting like stuff didn't happen, sweeping stuff under the rug, convincing yourself that you're bugging, that is going to do nothing but just get stuff down further and further and further until you end up exploding. The same thing applies in conversation with friends. You know, you start off with what you like about them. Listen, I really love that you and I can have a good time. I love how you tell me the truth and you express who you are boldly. But let me tell you something. I've been feeling a little off in our relationship. I don't like how when we get around other people, you speak to me in a disrespectful way. I don't like how you and you try to put me down because I don't want to make decisions that sacrifice my personal values. I don't like how, this is just examples. I don't like how you make fun of me. I don't like how you mistreat me. 
you know, and I've talked to you about this before. If you talk to the person about it before and it still keeps happening and you come to the decision to let them go, just say, listen, I'm deciding now that I think it's time that we part ways. I appreciate you, everything that you've done for me and for the, the knowledge that I've gained in this experience. But I just want you to know I prioritize myself and I just don't want anything, you know, getting worse. I don't want to keep putting myself in a situation where I don't feel valued and respected. So that's something like that when you're ready to let somebody go. Let's say you were in a circumstance and um, give you another example. Uh, even in professional settings, like I'm a, I'm a teacher, a substitute teacher. And, you know, some students would get disrespectful and you have to put them in a place. Like some of them, these kids look at me like I'm one of them. So, you know, one time a kid was like, um, a kid was like, Hey, yo, bro, Miss Jenkins, yo, like, yo, what's up, um, bro? Like, and I said, whoa, I said, excuse me, don't call me bro, I'm an adult. Do not call me bro, I'm an adult. You treat me with respect, just like that, <laughs> just like that. And now that child just no longer does that. Sometimes you have to speak up over and over and over and over too. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples where, you know, you might have to speak up too, especially when like, uh talking just kind of like let's give a more casual example let me give you another example in a workplace so one thing i do not like when i'm in a workplace because i hear this all the time the teachers tell me you look like a student you look like a kid you look like a middle schooler you look like and i i put every one of them in a place like stop all right i because i hear it all day so i say excuse me can you not tell me i look like a little kid i hear it all day every day i'm an adult thank you so much so one teacher came in and I was sitting at the desk and he was looking at me and I already knew he was looking at me because he thought I was a kid. I was like, I'm a student. I mean, I'm a, uh, <laughs> I'm a teacher. He was like, you're not, a, you're not an adult. You're not a teacher. And I said, yes, I am. I'm an adult. Thank you very much. Like, you know, he was like, oh, okay. Like, so now he knows not to do that again. Like, stop doing that. Because to me, that's disrespectful. Like if I'm coming in here and I'm telling you I'm an adult and I'm a teacher, that's what it is. Don't disrespect me and laugh and play me like a kid. So that's what I mean by speaking up for yourself and vouching for yourself and being real with yourself um, and your relationships. But I don't want you also, let me tell you another thing. You want to speak up and vouch for yourself with respect, but you also don't want to take speaking up for granted. Meaning you don't want to speak up more than you have to in a situation that's obviously better left when things are better left unsaid. I had to learn this too. Because I went from suppressing everything I felt, then I felt the need to address everything. And then that's kind of how I started to actually get too wrapped up in situations when I could have just been living my life. So you know when things are better left unsaid, when you've spoken already and nothing is being done, that's when you must make the necessary moves to better yourself in your life. So this is just some tips on um, how to speak up and how to defend yourself. I hope this helps you a ton. Like I said, I've had to do this so much and I'm really proud of myself for the progress I made. And if you've been a person who suppressed your voice a lot and now you're in a space to where you are speaking up, I really, really am proud of you. Um, but I follow that same formula. I start off with what I like about the person and then, you know, I had the conversation at the right time. Tony Gaskin suggested making sure that you um wait 24 hours like if you're heated you wait 24 hours you know one to 24 hours before addressing something and then you basically take some time this is what i have to do especially when it's a real serious conversation i have to gather evidence like the things that i'm talking about and why i'm feeling the way i'm feeling make sure you can really understand and see everything in your mind because sometimes too like if you kind of don't have you can't explain it, you don't have the proper evidence, take the time to write it out first or talk it over with a friend and see, you know, and really walk through your feelings and your emotions. That's what I had to do. Then sometimes too, if you have trouble standing up for yourself, you can write it out first and speak it to the person. I've done that before. Or you can, um, you can audio diary it, auto diary it or whatever. When you're starting out, it, it, it's better to get it out than to worry about how it's coming out, you know? So that's something I would suggest too if you're really having trouble. And then hear the other person out. Uh, you know, seek to understand, then be understood as Tony Gaskin says, but don't allow yourself to be manipulated and deceived. Stand in your truth, stand in who you are. Listen to the other person's perspective and trust yourself and your intuition. 
Is this something that is benefiting me or is it tearing me down? Is this something that's compromising my truth? Is this something that I see I can stay in or is this something I need to move away from? These are questions that you have to ask yourself. Sometimes the difficult conversation is standing up for yourself. It's just a matter of you standing up for yourself. And you will notice when you start standing up for yourself, people will move different. People will act different. A lot of people will not like it. I remember my cousin was so used to me um, <laughs> like just being a, a people pleaser and doing whatever she said, saying yes all the time. And I remember when we was talking and she asked me something, I said, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. And she was like, you never told me no. And you got to be careful because when you have bonds like that and you switch, you'll notice you'll lose some people. I've lost a lot of people when I started to vouch and speak up for myself. I'll give you another example. Like, I don't like when pe people call me the B word. Like, I don't like being called that word. Like, don't call me that word. I, I Don't call me that. I don't accept it from friends or men. I don't like that. So I speak up. I said, you know, excuse me, listen, you know, or, you know, I had one friend in the past. She, I used to let her call me that all the time. I used to never speak up. And then when I saw her, like, a, a whole bunch of years later, and she called me that, I said, mahogany. And she was like, she said it again. She was like, and I said, mahogany. I said, don't call me that word. I don't like being called that word. And it took her back because she's used to the mahogany that doesn't speak up. So I hope this helps y'all. And let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, if you have some tips on standing up for yourself, please let me know in the comments down below. And I wish you the absolute best when you are on the journey of what I wish you the absolute best on this journey to standing up for yourself the right way. Peace.